What is up, YouTube? New Scrawl here. It's been a long time since I posted a video, but it's time to get back to work on the good old E46, which is now moved into the garage. Like I said in the last episode, I'm going to be addressing fuel today. So, let's get started. So, honestly, didn't get much done from the last video. All I really did was I shaped these brackets a little bit more, rounded them off to make them a little bit more appealing, uh, chamfered the edges, that kind of stuff, all cosmetic stuff. The stock intake manifold setup, or I would say wire more so, also has this little black box where the throttle body would be right here. Um, obviously I, I got rid of that because uh, it's taking up a lot of space and it kind of hits everything. So I got rid of it and um, I wrapped up the harness a little bit. So. Got this all wrapped up, labeled, all that stuff. That way I know where everything goes. But this makes a lot more space in the engine bay, or more so under the intake manifold, so I could tuck it and make it a lot cleaner, I guess you would say. So one of the questions that I get asked a lot for this build is, what I'm gonna be running for fuel? This is it right here. I have an AEM 340 liter per hour fuel pump that is used. It came off my brother's S13. Uh, he decided to go E85, so uh, this is the pump that I was running before, not an E85 compatible, but I don't really intend to run E85 anyway. So, we got that. We got some Bosch EV14 uh, Porsche GT3, GT2 injectors. <laughs> you guys already know the drill. I'll link it down in the description. But these are 60 pound per hour injectors. I forgot what they equate to for CC, but I'll put it right here. And last but not least, an OEM fuel filter slash fuel pressure regulator. Um, apparently these uh, are more than capable of holding the power that I want, which is three to 400 horsepower. So there you have it. Pretty simple setup. So not much to it. Should be a short video. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So the cool thing about these injectors, they pretty much drop right in. So you could argue that they're OEM quality because they're for a Porsche, but whatever. I haven't heard anything bad about these. So let's drop these right in. Well, not even a couple minutes into the video and I already got fuel number one. Got my injectors stuck. Looks like they don't seat the same height um, into the manifold. So I got to do it from the fuel row, I'm assuming. Living you learn, I guess. Hands hurt. This is a stupid issue to have. Should have been a short video. <sighs> ah, finally. Take number two. Fuel injectors are on the fuel rail first. Jesus. Injectors are seated, but unfortunately, uh, I guess I didn't really count for that, but there's a gap for the bracket for the fuel rail. So I gotta come up with something for that. I don't have any spaces right now, so I gotta go buy some. Now, as far as the wiring goes, because this is flipped around, I can't be using this plastic anymore um, because the clips are this way. So yeah, no big deal. I'm just going to rear out the wiring. I'm not going to be plugging everything in quite yet. Um, mainly because I'm probably going to be taking off the manifold again. And I also need to do that spacer. But the fuel injector is all seated. Let's move on to something else. Okay. 
Okay, it's supposed to be a five mil. So another easy job wrecked. These clamps just got absolutely wrecked. Probably because this chassis is an old BMW chassis. 190 something thousand miles, I'd imagine these are pretty bad. But um, yeah, let's get this let's get this new fuel pressure regulator on. Probably gonna be leaking a bunch of fuel, so I need to get a pan for that. And I need to work really quickly. Wow, I don't even know if I wanna use these sleeves. I think I'm gonna just have to order new ones, which is not planned. I think that might be for the better, cause yeah, that is, ah, oh, that is just terrible. Okay, I'm gonna abort this for now. So with a quick trip to AutoZone, got some fuel line, some hose clamps, should be able to get the stain on. Should be. We'll see how this goes. got the fuel pressure regulator on I just gotta tighten down those clamps and we're good to go now when I was taking out the bracket for the fuel filter that stud just completely sheared so I got to figure out how I'm gonna mount this or protect this maybe I mean it's held in place right now but I'm worried obviously you can see right there because I'm scraping but I need to figure out how to get this secure all right so the last thing on the list I need to do the fuel pump so I'm on the passenger side of my car. I'm gonna get this fuel pump out. If you guys don't know, this car has two fuel pumps. One is the center to the passenger side. This is the main one. So let's get right to it. out now I gotta work on this pretty quick because I have an open gas tank and I don't want the fumes to be getting everywhere so let's get this thing modified two sub assemblies separated this hose was a pain to get removed from here I mean honestly just a little bit of force more than I'm used to with your traditional rubber uh, hoses and then with your two I, think, I believe they're called spade connectors but your two connectors it's gonna be really hard to see so you guys gotta bear with me but um, um, let's see there's a little hole in there where you gotta, you gotta poke something through like a paper clip like you just saw um, that we could get that little tab to go out just enough so I could pry this out. Now, as you guys can see, the OEM pump is quite a bit bigger than this thing in diameter. So I gotta figure out how I'm going to get this to sit inside of here. Huh. I don't know. I mean, they do provide this foam, but I, I mean, that's not really going to do anything, honestly. 
something like that. I just gotta cut it up maybe and then tighten this down. Talk about a ghetto setup. Hose clamps and a zip tie, but <laughs> I don't think that's going anywhere, guys. So now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna wire this up. So I ended up cutting the hose OEM hose that goes from the top of the hanger to the pump because I, uh, well, I messed it up. So luckily I had some extra fuel line going around. Um, not enough to loop around. Well, I, I probably could have, but uh, I decided to just go straight. Um, this may or may not cause me issues, but I mean, it's, it's a little kinked right here, but I don't think that's going to be too big of an issue. Bear in mind, this does compress, so may have issues depending on where this pump sits but I think it should be fine only one way to find out I guess I also don't have a clamp right here because that's how it sits from the factory I don't even have room between the hose and the hanger to get a clamp in there so I'm just gonna leave this as is it was a pain to get this onto this nipple um, so I'm pretty sure that that's not gonna come out and as you saw I drilled two holes on the top that way I can get my wires through that hole because Frankly, uh, I've been kind of back and forth, and I was originally going to use the OEM wires, but I decided to ditch it. I'd rather not fry those and then cause my fuel pump to fail and end up getting no fuel to the motor. So, do it right the first time, I guess. I was also going to do a bulkhead on the top, but I wasn't able to get one in time, so I'm just going to use regular sealant, or not regular sealant, um, fuel grade sealant from Permatex, I guess. I'll probably leave the OEM wires in here for now, but from the top, I am going to disconnect the wires so these don't make contact at all. So, no worry about this possibly uh, sparking or any of that stuff. Alright, so while I'm waiting for the sealant to dry because this thing is taking forever, I figured I'd give you an explanation because. Like I said earlier, I'm going to be not using the stock wires anymore. So from the OEM harness, the wires go to this plug, which the wires then go to the fuel pump. Now instead, we're not going to be doing the two wires um, that are going to this plug are not going to be there anymore. Instead, they're going to be wired to this relay. Now if you don't know what a relay does, basically it's like, uh, it's like a switch. So these two wires are going to be connected to the stock fuel pump wires and this is what's going to tell the relay to turn on or off. This blue wire is going to be connected directly to the battery and from there it goes to this yellow wire which is going to connect to the fuel pump. I'll show you guys a diagram right now of how this is going to be wired up. I'm going to be getting a lot cleaner power directly from the battery and these wires are thicker and gauge so I don't, I don't have to worry about uh, drawing too many amps through and possibly burning up the contacts and you know ending up with a fuel starved motor because it's not getting enough power all right she's all wired up pardon the amateur wire job i have no professional at this this is probably my second time doing this anyway i got a power wire coming from the from the battery to a fuse 15 amp fuse that goes to this blue end which I believe is the 30 on the relay. Yellow going to a power through the hanger and then to the pump itself. And then I got the ground. I know these are both the same color wire, but just bear with me. Um, got the ground from the pump coming out of here and it's going to ground right there. Now, if this doesn't ground adequately then I'll probably change it up but I think this should be fine. You got the two OEM wires for the pump going to the relay. That should be 85 and 86 on the relay. So I'm going to tidy this up a little bit because this is all a mess and then uh, we'll get this back on and that should be it. 
All right, so that pretty much sums it up for this video. Got the Bosch portion injectors on. I got the OEM fuel pressure regulator on, and I got the AM 340 liter per hour fuel pump in, mounted, wired in, all that jazz. I'm sure you notice I hardwired that in. That was by mistake. Um, so <laughs> if I need to take it out, I need to cut the wires. So that was a mistake on my end. There's a couple more things we need to do to this motor to finally get it to start up for the first time. Fingers crossed. I got everything crossed. That everything will go smoothly. But you guys will find it on the next video. So, until next time. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Ooh.